Let's read Genesis. Now, let me say this before we start this morning. Uh, in case you are watching us and you are hearing testimonies about people giving. Now, I did not ask anybody to give their salary or anything. I said people should pray to God to send them what to give. Did you get that? That's very important. I said don't give your income, don't give any other. Just ask God for something special. That was how it came then. I said that for a reason. When you when people hear testimonies about people giving, you know, there are those who just get angry. And they're asking the number one, there is nothing wrong in God's word in asking people to give. Giving and Christianity are inseparable. It is where manipulation gets in. When people are told that first class blessing and all those things, there are rules in the word of God governing giving, which number one is as God has blessed every man. Number two, as every man has proposed in his hearts. That means people are not supposed to react emotionally. That there is power here now. If you come now, something will happen. Now, though instructions can come, but the basic rule in God's word is that people go home. They decide from their house, husband and wife. They pray and say, this is what we want to do. That's what the Bible says. Did you get that? Okay, so, but that believers will say, the sincere truth is, your generosity is part of what shows your spirituality. That's the truth. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I, it's, it's something that's not talk about this morning, but sometimes I just go to, okay, you can sit down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> God bless you. You know, it's important to <laughs> understand this thing. Amen. Okay. If you are coming for the first time, it's because I've been accused of asking people to stand too many times. So I've repented. So usually I don't ask people to stand for long again. That's very, you know, um, I'm about to share something now, but I just want to say to everybody, if God can't trust you financially, he can't trust you. And the truth of the matter is this. I said to the workers yesterday, and I think about this every now and then, people that we give to financially in this church, and many of them are seated here, regularly we give our school fees, we give a lot of things. I don't know how much, I'm not in welfare department and I don't sign any checks, so I don't know, but probably in seven figures we give out every month, I don't know. But it's, I usually wish that when you are helped once or twice, you should rise on your feet and help others also. If you continue to have mentality that they should give to you, you will never do great things on earth. A good example of this, African nations. Nigeria is 62. We've been begging Europe helping us. And I told her yesterday, it just occurred to me, maybe because I was in America again briefly last week, it just occurred to me. Up till now, they are still not seeing the injuries of COVID. It hit them bad, more than Nigeria, far more than Nigeria. Yet they were sending ventilators to Nigeria. Those who don't understand this, that those who give go above. It's just the principle of the kingdom. The only person compared to the world, the only thing compared to God, my money, money. Satan was never compared to God in the Bible. This is the whole reason for agitation of faith. People are angry. Yes, there might be places where somebody, we have many of them around who go around scamming people. But you see, fake currency does not mean we should throw away the original. The Bible teaches giving. It's as straight as that. I have not asked anybody to do anything for me. I'm blessed. But I do know from God's word. Anyone who teaches you the word, who blesses you, if you don't give to them, there's a problem. Galatians chapter 6. I have never stood asking anybody to give anything to me. I mean, there are people, if I say I need, let's say, I'm just giving an example, 10 million now. I don't think it will be up to 72 hours to have it. Because there are those who have been with me for over seven years here and they've been able to prove my integrity and the rest. So we are not asking, but you see, if you are a Christian, and you all you read all this all say church is collect and all those that's what and then you you have developed you are just going to rob yourself of walking in God's blessing. There's no other way. And then they quote uh, this Bill Gates, this one doesn't give time, this one doesn't. I see you are turning the Bible to look at them. 
All you should search, search the word of God. What does the word of God say? Whatever it says, you can, you can, you can depend on God's word. Yeah. So many people should have been far ahead of where they are right now. The problem is their mindset. Their mindset. One day I read, Ah, oh Lord, it's when I don't plan to talk something, we start coming. If you have read Matthew chapter 25, about the parable of the talents, so he gave one, five, he gave one, two, he gave one, one. The one that received five traded with it and had five more. The one with two traded with it. Luke version uh, uh, paints a picture better. The one with one went to hide the coin and he used one word. He said, I know you are a hard man. You know, that Christians still suspect God. <laughs> That's also people cannot sleep in the dark. As if when you put on your bulb, that will check out Satan. Someone that will squish you in the dark will also squish you whether you put on light or not. I don't know whether people are being me or someone that will choke you. <laughs> when some of us do experience all those things, I don't know why. <laughs> As a believer, I'm not saying those things don't they happen to some people. But you see, when are they going to grow out of some things? He said, I give you authority over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What you should do is to be conscious of that more than the forces of darkness attacking you. Where your mind is part time, see, the battleground is your mind. If you focus on the promises of God, you will win at all times. If you rate very highly the potency of the attacks of Satan, then it will get you. Are you with me? You know, I've always been telling you, I'm grateful to God that nobody told me when I got born again. Thank God they didn't tell us. I'd been taken in the particular church I used to attend growing up that my, my, I mean, I don't want to say, I'm not saying they are not believers, but we're doing all this river baths. Uh, severally, I was told to go and have my bath in the river. And then severally, the whole family. And then other times, we were told to break coconut, to drink coconut water and all those things. But you see, when I got born again, nobody told me that I needed deliverance. Thank God, 26 years, I've never needed one. If somebody had prayed that gospel to me, that you see, you have drunk things, you've done this, ah, they're affecting you right now. You need to, I would have remained in that battle forever. Like those who go that route, have you known that they never conquer? They stay there forever. If any man be in Christ, what he drank before does not matter again. Are you, are you with me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They did not say that you have to now vomit all those things as we pray. Oh, thank God nobody told me that. I was a, I was, I mean, I too was a baby Christian one day. If I was told that, I would have been praying against forces and maybe 27 years after I'm still praying against, I was still praying against forces. But Christianity was not like this that time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Is somebody hearing me? Praise the Lord. Anyway, uh, what led me to say this? I said, believers, some still suspect God. And you shouldn't. So he said, you are a hard man. Now, let me say something very quickly about this parable and then I'll try and share, even though I'm already sharing anyway. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to get restricted to at times what I think ahead of time that I should be speaking on. Now listen, I have explained this here before. It first came from Pastor Benga, who was sent by Pastor Boju one time many years ago to share with us at the former venue when we first moved there. And he, he, his illustration was very powerful. The Bible says he gave them according to his several ability. One of the sins that believers commit in life is to try to be like someone else. When you try to be like someone else, you rob heaven of the raw talent that you have been given. Part of the problem of that guy with one talent, he was looking at those who were given five. 
and he did, not, he did not like the idea that I was giving one. Now listen to me very well. This is the summary of the parable. In the wisdom of the giver of talents, God believes that some people, <laughs> and I never saw it that was that man explained that way about seven years ago when he came to teach in our church. It's amazing that God looked at one. He was, the, the husband man there was actually trying to depict God. He looked at one and he said five. He looked at one, two. He looked at one, one. Remember, God knows you more than you know yourself. And the, uh, the depth behind what that man did, the husband man, which we are saying God Almighty, after looking at the three, he started thinking, this one, you would think the one with five was the biggest of them all. It was actually the weakest of them all. The giver, by divine wisdom, looked at this one and he said that he is so weak that he needs five talents to survive on that. This one is stronger. With two, she'll be fine. This one is the strongest with just one. <laughs> Are you with me? If the Lord thought, this is why, having to read in history, people born into abject poverty have risen to the highest heights. Pastor Nebo said when he was 18, he was still wearing it, he was not wearing his slippers. And I think Pastor Bakari said the same thing. That was it was house boy when he came to Lagos. At times, at times. Can I take it was sick for many years and then he began to heal a lot of people. God looked at some after creating them that this one needs a lot of support. So he places him in a rich family. But he looks at this one with what is inside this one. Even if you give back to him in a village, by the time he's 30, he's all over the world. So the strongest people are those who are giving very little because you don't pack lunch for a 21-year-old person going out. But you cannot let a four-year-old kid go out without packing breakfast, lunch, and everything. In primary school, you took biscuit to school. It would be as absurd to see a 20 level student <laughs> asking the mother to pack are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Don't despise your background. Remember the Bible said that there is no God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. That means that situation around your family. It is because by the wisdom of God you are more than enough when it comes to surviving it. Polygamous family enemies right left hand there are some people they are so weak that god gave them brothers and sisters who will love them part them because they are weak but some of you are so strong hostilities on every side yet you are getting to the top regardless of what Amen. hallelujah Amen. he says that let there be hundred enemies around this one they can't bring her down but this one ah put friends oh because this one are butter <laughs> that is what we can learn in the parable see <laughs> amen but there's something i just want to share with us briefly this morning is someone blessed already yes, glory to god Hallelujah. never complain just rise from wherever you are never complain amen oh blessed be the name of the lord Never complain and never compare yourself with anybody. All right. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Genesis 8, 18, 19. Let's read something from there. Or let's start from 18, 18. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seeing. Let's start from 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. 
and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Wow. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Verse 20. So God decided. You know, I want to talk about, I don't know, maybe I call it deep, call it unto deep. I don't want to worship from afar. There are dimensions in God. There are levels in the realm of the spirits. You are not called to stay at the shallow end of the rivers of the spirits, of the river of the spirits. You are supposed to press into deep things of God. We just read right now God's testimony of a man. Wow. You know, I don't know. I think I was praying during the week and this was coming to me in a very strong way. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. One of the signs of spiritual maturity is stability. The second one is rest or peace. Ah, oh, Lord. I know I'm just going to continue second service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis 15, verse 1. I want to call your attention to something. Remember, Isaiah 37, 31, or 31, 37, which one? 37, 31. We come by Genesis 3. I just want to read something there. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Everybody say downward. downward. Upward. upward. Uh, are you getting this? I know I'm picking things here and there. Colossians chapter 2. Let's start from verse 6. Colossians 2, 6. Remember, fruit, da root downwards. Fruit. So you see the fruit, but you don't see the root. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Look at the next word. Verse 7. Rooted and built up. Rooted and built up. Rooted and built up. Hallelujah. How do we get rooted? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 17, 8. Remember Psalm 1, but give what Jeremiah 17, 8. So I'm about to say something and service ends. I'll go to our second service. I just want to... You know, sometimes I look at believers and you tend to ask, what are you looking for? Many are not settled. You will not begin to have, because after this message, I might move, maybe next week up our way to visions and revelations. You will not be able to see the deep things of God if you are not settled. And you will never settle as a Christian until you understand what I'm sharing this morning. For it shall be, let's start from verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. It shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spread out our roots by the river and shall not see when it comes. Somebody say amen. Amen. Have you heard this word before that life is full of ups and downs? But that contradicts this. The Bible says, It shall not see 
Is it possible to be evergreen? To have eternal success, he shall not see when it comes. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Drought will come, but they will not affect him. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. This is very similar to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh in the castle of ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scornful. But his delight is the, in the law of his God, and in his law he meditate day and night. What we say, he shall be like a tree planted by river. He brings out his fruit in season, his leaves shall not wither. What leads to this? Listen to me. By the time we started work, having workers with ESA, I started telling them what some of the things that the Lord is leading us into. I went last week, that was how I was not at the mercy account. I didn't plan to, but I had no choice. There was a meeting of Benin and a few pastors that I, I needed to attend. I just happened to get the invitation and bless God, I was, I was able to go and, and now this is the funny thing, I was there like some years back also, I mean, you could actually get to talk to him on one-on-one, -on -one, that kind of thing, and I, while I was wrestling with whether to go or not, because I said, Lord, I've never missed Mercy account, I'm not going to miss any, uh, and then he just, his video just popped up again on my laptop in the office, and he was talking about the fact, I said, I'm not praying for long life again. I might just go any moment from now. Ah, I said, okay. <laughs> Which he continued to say when we got there again. If that man leaves, I'll be so because he's been saying some things that about. Um, and I said, okay, I need to now listen to me very I, When I was there, within the space of four days apart, I saw two great visions. I categorized my visions. We will talk about visions and revelation talking about trans, open vision, and neighbor. I saw two great visions. I won't take details on the vision, but I'm telling, I started telling the leaders because I came back on Friday morning and we had to have vigil on Friday. Pastors in the church, we had to talk about some things. The kingdom of God needs speed and God needs vessels it can depend on. And when you are distracted, you cannot walk in power. So something has to happen to you, and that is the little thing I'm building into sharing this morning. I will continue second service. That is in Genesis 15. If you don't understand this, you will not be a giant, spiritually speaking. Now look at this. After these things, the word Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy sheep and thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2. I don't know why the Lord is pressing this in my spirit. Abraham said, Lord, what will thou give me? The point, the reason for that vision. God was trying to do something to Abraham that must happen to every Christian. If you are going to cross over to a dimension of powerful visions and revelations, you must get to a point. What will you give me, Lord, must go down. God is my reward, must come first. Did somebody get what I've just said now? Um, precious skeletons. Ah, Lord. Help me to let everyone understand what I've just said now. <laughs> let me say it again. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying, pastors? God appeared to Abraham and he said that, I know you need Isaac. I know you want a child. I am your reward. In other words, the first thing I want you to get and I might need you to demonstrate that you have gotten it for 30 years, is the fact that if you don't have a child, am I sufficient if you have me? 
do you rate eternal life superior to a life in UK? How many people are hearing what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Am I, am I clear? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Why do people fluctuate in their Christian life? So you are happy in church now. Three months later, you are sad. I have no child. I have no husband. I have no... The first thing that must happen to you, can you cross to a realm where God has become everything to you? That should you, should, they, should in case you don't have all the things you desire, can you be as happy as you would with those things without them because you have God? That was what God did to Abraham. So you want to do masters abroad. You are planning to run away to Canada. You want a good wife, a wonderful husband, you want money. What about if I am the Almighty, if I say to you that, don't worry about those things, I am the one you should have. Can you, can God satisfy you without giving you some of the things you want? Are you satisfied with God alone? Can you rejoice in your salvation and treasure it more than anything you want to receive? And can you be happy with God even if you don't have those things? Can God alone satisfy you or look, I want God and a check. Here is the truth. When you overcome that first part, if God alone satisfies you, after a while, there's no other thing you will not have. And then there's no other thing that can ever control you again. This is what they call spiritual death, or what they call death, resurrection, whatever, different names, crucifying the flesh. Because those who have gone into this realm, Satan will fear you forever. Nothing in this world can move you. This is the realm which some have attained to that there is nothing they have that they cannot give out. They have conquered things. What is driving them is bigger than things. That was why God started pushing this to Abraham. And you know what? Years after, he said, can I have the Isaac I gave you? And Abraham said that, when do you want Isaac? Tomorrow. I won't do it in the afternoon. I'll do it early in the morning. His heart was bigger than Isaac. You know, if you don't get this, Lord, I want husband, the same husband can stop you from serving God as you should. Lord, I want more. Do you know how many Christians have traveled out and their faith has traveled away from their lives? And I told the workers yesterday, this exodus of uh, people traveling from Nigeria abroad is supposed to be an opportunity to end. That's why we're having London stuff. I'm going to share a lot with them. And this is why, thank God for those guys. Many of them are watching me this morning now. And I've been challenging them. The kingdom. I have said this before. I love Muslims there for one reason. Prosperity does not change what they believe. Last month when I was in Leicester, the amusement park I went to, all their women were in hijab, even riding all those things, and their men dressed as usual. And I said, the only set of people, all of us, now I'm not, I told the workers and they began to laugh yesterday, I am not a Catholic, even I went to a Catholic primary school, I love Catholic so much, I don't so much believe in rosary, but for the first time, I fell in love with Rosemary in UK. I don't even want them to really record this that I'm saying. Now, it's what I was here. What I'm about to say now. Out of, I used Uber to come and pick me in the hotel like 16 times or so. 14 out of the 16. Those who came to pick me, Kong, Muslim, they are, everything. They're 14 out of 16 in London. 
The day I checked me at the airport was in full hijab. By the time the only guy that came to pick me that was in, that he had rosary, I, was, I just fell in love with rosary. And I said to the Lord, where are the Christians here? All those people also, because I used to converse with them, at times I would try to pray, they also migrated in. Nothing has changed about their belief. They still practice their Sharia. As soon as Christians get there, they begin to insult Christians that are here, that you are praying because of this, they lose too much bogger. Check the Bible very well. God has always, God doesn't have problem. He wants his people to prosper. But in the moment of prosperity, Christians are always betraying God. As young as I am, I have seen guys that went to school together who just became MD and they can't go to church again, even in Nigeria. Why is it that it, it has been, God started warning them, sir, when they were about to enter promised land. He told them that you will forsake me when you get there. And they did. He was right. They did. And it has always been. And I'm telling, and those who are, you can continue, those who are watching me right now, wherever country you are, and you see, they think that those nations will be at peace forever. Who would have thought this would happen to Ukraine? And every Christian that I know, once they cross over to Europe, they have to stop going to church and stay at home. If you say you can't fit into any church there, start a prayer meeting. See, this is why you should not be a baby Christian. And I'm talking to all of you, those who will travel tomorrow. Go and start a church there. If you are not led by God, if God tells you to start something of your own that he wants you to pioneer, fine. But if he doesn't, call us here. We let you know that brethren, they start praying together. Don't allow, don't allow your spirit man to go down because you are away. And it's happening to a lot of people. And the philosophy will set in. And then some can't fast again. And then they begin to talk. You know, in Africa, because you are poor, that's why you pray. And they pray in America. So don't they pray there? There are more intercessors in America than Nigeria. And people start talking. This thing, they pain me. Dubai, I was told, I don't know, that they've come to borrow money from First Bank before Nigeria or a particular bank. And the bank did not borrow. I don't know which of the banks. Maybe I don't want to mix up the story, but I was told. But you see, some of you go there from time. I think I was there three years ago, maybe four years ago or so. Interestingly, I was there. I mistakenly went there when they were doing the annual fasting. I suffered. Because there was no food anywhere until 7 p.m. You will be made to do that fasting with them. I said, Lord, why was I not led as my wife to come here? Because I was just there for five days, and those five days, oh God, the hotel where you slot in coins and drinks will come out, they shut down all the refrigerators everywhere. Yes, it was only one Nigerian woman, and she was a Muslim. In Nigeria, we always disobey. She had the restaurants and she was serving food, selling around one, but you must enter in a coded way. <laughs> So I got there and I said, I like, I said I all of the, that was our only rescue plan. That was the only way. Otherwise, all of us would be fasting till seven. No drink, no food anywhere. That nation moved from poverty, from a desert, to one of the finest nations. But their five time prayer. Oh God. Ah, yeah. America is prospering now, all kinds of perversions and laws. What is the problem with believers? I tell you the truth, Satan doesn't fight any other person, he fights believers, but must we continue to let him win? Six thirty a.m. You could get a bus to come to church. Now you have a car. How are you not in church? You say my car developed a fault, so I stay at home. Your car developed for you too, you develop a fault with the car. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you with me? <laughs> Let me stop here this morning. Oh, my time. I didn't even know. God. I, I'm going to continue second service. I want to plead with everybody on your way home. Just watch the second service. Because I am, I, I've, I've not even started. Hey, how are you? How is marriage? How is marriage? The latest bride in town. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, men and brethren. Let's rise.
I, if you don't remember many of the things I've said, can you go back home with this one question? Are you satisfied with God alone? Can God alone satisfy you? Who is like your Lord in all the earth? Much less love and beauty. Nothing in this world. Sorry. Jesus, you are the cup. You are the cup that won't run dry. Hallelujah. Your presence. Can you wake up in the morning and begin to dance around your room? They just denied you a job. But your song is that this light that I have. Zoe. MDs don't have it. Presidents don't have it. One day we shall stand before the King of Kings. And nations will know that to be a president without him is nothing. Eternal life. John valued it and he said that which we have seen, they valued this thing. They valued it. That was why they were beheading them and they were still singing. And the Peshmerga Christians that ISIS killed in our time, some years back, that CNN showed how they slaughtered 300 of them at the Mediterranean Sea. Even CNN reported that they glow on their faces. They were happy. They have found something. I ask you again, why here and there? Spiritual maturity, stability, peace. He said, come unto me in the labor and, and, and every lady, and I will give you rest. So many Christians haven't found rest. You know, I've seen Christians go for all programs. Deliverance here. Why are people going for deliverance? And this is why they scam people and get things out of them. Women have been raped in the name of deliverance before. Parts of their body have been touched by dirty-minded preachers. Here and there, people give every money and they get angry. What are you looking for all around? Where is the rest that Jesus promised? It's because you haven't settled in him. When God begins to train you this way, it will look as if God has neglected the major need in your life. He is only telling you that look away from the need. And look unto me. After a while, he will show you like he did to Abraham. You will not only have Isaac, you are going to be a father of many nations. But first of all, accept me as your reward. That can I satisfy you? Am I enough for you? Or you want me plus something? Lord, I love you. But it has to be you and us bad. Lord, I love you, but plus a child. They are, they are legitimate need. He will not. I just told you. I grew up in Abelta, one of the leading pastors there. I was a pastor Tai Dukoya. When Pastor Tai Wo called him, Muslims in Ogu State called to congratulate. Because that's about the second largest church or so in the city. When they gave birth, the wife was over 50, husband over 50, and they put to bed. I told about time, I said, sir, I know. He said, I was in his house, he was, I said, I know him, sir. I said, give me the phone, sir, let me also greet him. And he passed the phone to me. I said, they raised us in the city, and we all need that idea of a child. What of if you became depressed, and he stopped pastoring us, people like me, because, Lord, I'm praying for others, I do have a child, he had this rest in God. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Cindy Trim. When she came, she came to she came back last year or two years ago, and then she was, she was 43 years ago to preach. One of the most powerful female preachers in America. She's over 60 and she's not married. She has a university. And last time we saw her, she was just saying that I know my husband is coming. If she stayed, ah, oh God, this one. Look how many lives that woman has touched. Can God satisfy you? 
you have con- has he conquered your heart? And when you are not here, if tomorrow you are in Canada, are you standing for the kingdom? Or enjoy the prosperity of Canada and also say bye-bye, you know, just become a lukewarm Christian, two minutes prayer in the morning and just go out. Now you are in Canada. You say, you know what's going on? You know, life is busy here, yeah, man. We got no time to pray. <laughs> Or you redefine the culture of the land by the life that is in you. It's just my call to someone. You want to appear radiant at all times. Those of us who stand before you to pray, that we do have problems at times. When God wants to send you, like I believe, He has sent us and He still send us to die. These are the trainings we undergo. If I tell you the story of my life, until you sit down on your floor and conclude that you know what, Lord, you are not just singing it, your heart has come to accept that, look, if I don't have any other thing, I'm okay with you. At that point, it begins to bring things into your life because those things can't control you anymore. Oh, Jesus will bless you this morning. We give you praise. We worship you. We bless your name. When I'm away, night upon night, praying, and I'm away from the family, I love my family genuinely. But because there is something bigger. If the Lord is not sure of this, He cannot give some things to you. He cannot. All this... Me borrowing some money from my wife and adding some getting SUV and I drove it home and the following day God said and I, I only paid 60% of the money. I was only the owner of the car. I said I will pay instrumentally every month and the Lord told me to give out the car. It is to do something to us. I let it go and it, car can be an issue again. And I can say this boldly, there's no amount. The first time I had $5,000, he told me to give it out. That's why there's nothing that, there's nothing I possess as I stand before God and before his people today and before Satan, who knows. There's nothing I possess that it will pain me to give it out. Nothing. The days of pain, he made me do it severally. This art has been conquered. That's also the reason. Before the church was one year, the closest to me that I was living was supposed to be an associate came to me. We're having a program where it's supposed to be 40 and we're just 19. And he said, I don't know why this church is not growing. I am leaving. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm starting my own. That was the word he used. And he said, don't worry, I'm not starting the church. I'm starting the Gabba. But he started in the church. And the Lord told me that attend the inauguration service. Give him your best suit. My friend got married then. His mother is a millionaire or was a millionaire then. They all that suit for me and I was the best man. That was I had that suit then. And he said, I've only worn it once. He said, give that boy living the suit, your best shoe, your best shirt and your best tie and attend the program. And I did. So when somebody says I am living, I'm not attached to anybody. It is called circumcision of the Lord. Working on your heart to put you where you should be. That it will be all in all to you. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh God. You are blessing Jesus. <laughs> Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know. Um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. 
If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.